Note the disclaimer. Steven Universe is a show with endless heart to give, likeable characters, and is a series that just offers a refreshingly pleasant perspective on things. I've got another idea! I can't thank you enough! It's a show that's given me a lot of joy lately, so I want to pay it back. So let's take a look at the top 10 best Steven Universe episodes of all time. If you haven't checked out the series yet, you might enjoy watching through some of these particular episodes. In my opinion, they're the best of the best. But anyway, on to the countdown. Number 10. Coach Steven. Steven starts acting as a personal trainer for Greg, Sadie, and Lars. We also get to see Fusion for the first time. And boy, is it awesome! Great it feels to be me. I find the concept of two beings molding together into one being combining their best strengths so damn cool. And I like how Sugalite is completely out of control, like the two can't be mentally coherent together. Did I mention the song in this one is probably the catchiest, most well done song in the series? Apparently this particular one was sung by Rebecca Sugar, the creator of the series. The lyrics are fantastic, it's memorable, and I could listen to it a hundred times over. Something I really appreciate about Steven Universe is that the songs never feel out of place or stay longer than they should. The songs are a rarity that are used purely to more interestingly express the character's thoughts. This one also has a profound message about personal strengths. That personal strength isn't necessarily physical for everyone, like Steven's personal strength lies in his ability to motivate others which is a pretty damn useful ability to have. This one's profound, catchy as hell, and super enjoyable. Coach Steven is an easy spot for the list. Number 9. Story for Steven, and we need to talk. I included these two episodes together because they're both flashbacks on Greg's past with Rose, and I think they're both brilliant. We get some really fascinating flashbacks on Steven's mother and Greg, it's actually really touching to watch Greg fall in love with Rose and give up his entire music career. I mean, look at this seamless transition he does from holy shit, I'm in love, to cool and smooth. Space train to the cosmos. Yeah. What's great about these two is despite the fact that I've only seen them interact for 20 minutes, I can genuinely believe they're in love. But they also don't shy away from the relationship complications. It's not just all passion and joy. It feels like a real relationship with ups and downs. Can you just talk to me for one second like a real person? I'm not a real person. And I really felt these emotions right along with Greg. How are we gonna make this work? He even gets jeered at for his taste in women. Oh, here we go. How big was she? Eight feet tall, massive hair. See, Greg, this is your problem. You want one huge woman when you could have multiple smaller ones. Ugh, Marty, women are people. To be honest, I've got a thing for tall women as well, so I really ended up empathizing with Greg's character. On the side, we even discover Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl's past, and just how attached they were to Rose. I really hope the creators do more of these flashbacks, as they're among my favorite episodes. I just couldn't tear my eyes away from those two... R roses th These two. Those... Greg and Rose. Yeah, m moving right along. I'm just a comet. And number eight. Chili Tid? Am I pronouncing that right? Either way, this episode is actually just the gems having a slumber party while Garnet looks for Lapis Lazuli, a rogue gem who's at the bottom of the ocean. Don't stay up too late. There's snacks in the fridge. Bye. It's another episode where there's surprisingly little happening outside the one room, yet I've rewatched it so many times. 
even small details like the dreams Stephen and Pearl have. I tell you about writing that thing in the house. Have fun of your dance, dude. I just love the small details of this one. We also discover pretty solid proof that Pearl had a romantic interest in Rose. Huh, interesting. There's also a massive plot development hidden within as well, as the main villain of the series rises from the ocean. Overall though, it's just a fun, replayable, enjoyable episode. Chili? Tide? If someone knows how to pronounce this one, please correct me on that. I'd really like to know how to pronounce it. I'll show you how it's done. Number 7. Keystone Motel. I was hesitant to include this one, as it isn't actually that funny, but I can't think back on an episode of any other show which so perfectly captures the raw emotion that comes after a fight with someone you care about. Just go! We must move past this, Ruby. She lied to us so we can form sardonics! She tricked us! Don't you feel used? We're choosing to take it personally. It's fused! Pearl's done something to deceive Garnet pretty badly. And for the first time, we actually see Garnet break down. Ruby and Sapphire, Garnet's fusion partners, are trying to grieve over the betrayal in their own ways. And we see the grieving process through them. You can understand Ruby being furious and unable to control herself, while you can also understand Sapphire's approach of just putting up a cold, calculating exterior. Oh boy. Where's the other one? Once again, Greg is fantastic in this episode. And for the first time, even Steven is brought to the end of his patience. Hey, it's okay, pal. We can still save this. Why don't we just bag these up to go and... And they manage to do this entire drama with a resolution within 10 minutes. Amazing feats like that are why I think this show's amazing. Ready to call it a day? Not before we get our free ice. Number 6. Maximum Capacity. If you've ever had someone who's hoarded in your family, you immediately connect with this episode. Hell, you'll connect with this one even if you've ever tried to escape reality for a time, which we all have. Steven and Greg commit to clearing out Greg's garage full of junk, but Greg finds an old stash of tapes he and Amethyst used to watch together. That's right, Greg and Amethyst. There's so much mystery to this episode. At some points, it's like they're actually insinuating that Amethyst and Greg were in a relationship. I don't know about this. Hey man, it's cool. I've seen your junk before. Or just casual lovers? I don't know. Both Greg and Amethyst submerge themselves back in these old tapes, leaving reality behind. You, you people have too, too much, much money. money. <laughs> <laughs> you can always count on Lil B. <laughs> yeah. Everything's always great with him. You can really feel Greg's turmoil as he fights between escapism and doing what's right for his son Steven. The conclusion is satisfying, but leaves a lot of unanswered questions too. I know I've said this before, but the connections between these characters feel so real. In reality, both friendships and relationships are really simple, because we're all human. And this episode expresses that complexity perfectly. Number 5. Laser Light Cannon. Simply put, this to me is everything Steven Universe is all about. Beautifully coloured, emotional, powerful, atmospheric and intriguing. It has tension, but not so high that there isn't room for the characters to breathe. Eyeball. Stop! It gives us an amazing introduction to the gems, to Greg, and to Steven. You can tell how much effort was put into this one episode, as it introduces us in 10 minutes to everything we need to know about the show. We learn that Steven's an idealistic, good-hearted kid. We learn the gems care deeply about him and protect Beach City. We learn Greg's made a lot of mistakes, but cares deeply for his son, and Steven cares deeply in return. We learn everything we need to know about both the characters and the story. I really like how slowly this episode moves. Even just how we watch Steven slowly make his way through the garage to try and find Rose's weaponized laser cannon. Is it gonna be okay? Mmm. If every pork chop were perfect... We wouldn't have hot dogs! 
This may seem a strange metaphor, but watching Laser Light Cannon for the first time was like basking in the warm morning sun after a cold winter's night. It shows we have a beautiful morning ahead, and the best is yet to come. Number 4 Space Race Pearl wants to return to space, so Steven asks his dad to help him build a rocket. In Greg's own words, Sure, why not? How hurt could we get? So they work together to build a quote unquote rocket. Pearl sees this and decides to actually build a rocket. Is there a shop in town that carries F1 single nozzle liquid fueled rockets? You really are serious! Of course! We're also going to need a spacesuit for Steven so he doesn't freeze or explode. Which leads to one of the most powerful moments in the series, as Pearl chooses between the thousands of years she's left behind and Steven, her only remaining family from Rose. Even if Pearl can be a bit obsessive, she's a wonderful character at heart, and you can really empathize with her turmoil here. I could watch the final two minutes of this episode a hundred times. It's a simply gorgeous episode. We'll get there someday, I promise. You know, I think I'd rather be here on Earth. With me! Yeah, with you. And for number three, Sworn to the Sword. The sun is bright, our shirts are clean, we're sitting up above the sea. Come on and share this gem with me. I call it an earworm, as it stays in my head hours after, but I think earworm is too harsh a term for it. It's such a gentle, beautiful song that I'd more call it an ear shiatsu massage that continually wafts through your head. That analogy made more sense in my head, sorry. I really enjoy Carney and Steven episodes, as the two always have this incredibly sincere and beautiful friendship that is just refreshing to watch unfold. Carney begins being trained by Pearl with a sword, and she rapidly becomes really skilled, putting less and less value into her own life and more and more into her cause. Steven, of course, sees this and knows it's not his philosophy, and tries to convince Carney that they should work together. This is much easier. That's the idea. I could go on for ages about the message in this one. It speaks about what it means both to be independent, but also to accept the help of others. She's the strawberry. And he's the biscuit. And that makes us jam buds. What? It really touched me as I watched Connie realize maybe she could put value in both herself and what she's fighting for. Maybe they could work together as a team. Maybe it's all right to accept the helping hand of others. If it's easier, well, then that's even better. I just really like the philosophy and the interactions between Steven and Carney in this one. Their teamwork, the genuinity of their friendship. It's really a gem, no pun intended. Sometimes the greatest fighting power isn't from spite, wrath, or hate, but from fighting for something or someone you care about. And when we combine our best with someone else's best, we get a force of nature even greater than we ever imagined. We are one! Number 2 Winter Forecast I've easily watched this episode more than any other Steven Universe episode, and I'm not sure I can fully justify why. It's another Future Vision episode. Carney has to get home before the snowstorm starts, and we see Steven go through tons of alternative futures in the process. Honestly, I could just watch these two characters enjoy marshmallows together for the whole episode. Lord Sugar! Sugar Syrup! Most of my screenshots for this show actually come straight from this episode. The atmosphere for this one is just so warm and welcoming that it warms me up in the winter. Nice sweatshirt, Greg. Ah, oh, thanks! I can't fully justify this one, but I think it's an absolute must-watch for the series. The number one best Steven Universe episode is... Ocean Gem. This is among some of the most atmospheric, 
beautifully orchestrated 11 minutes I've ever seen. The ocean disappears due to a rogue gem, so Steven sets out to bring the ocean back. I'm gonna bring the ocean back? But get really thirsty trying. And as always, the show lets us soak in the entire atmosphere as the entire crew sets out on a road trip to find the ocean. For me, this episode was the milestone of when the series went from good to amazing. Ocean Gem was more like an epic season finale than a regular episode. It just really set the bar to a new level. Oh, the environment in this one is just so gorgeous to both watch and hear. Look at Lapis Lazuli. She really does feel like she is an element of the ocean, like she's manipulating the entire sea. The music is perfect, and the fights feel epic and massive. For once, we get to see the gems fight against an enemy with truly no holds barred. And yet, the fight is eventually solved very much the way Steven would solve a fight. Not through conflict, but through understanding the other side, which results in diplomacy and healing. Spit healing, but healing nonetheless. In terms of sheer quality, I think this is the best Steven Universe episode we've gotten to date. Everything you can look, hear, and feel is just perfectly polished. Gotcha! They even top it off with the most perfect, heartwarming ending. Well, what's that thing you always say about the pork chops and the hot dogs? Here, at episode 26, they could have ended the series right here and left it a classic. But instead, they're trying to make the show even better with every passing episode. I've got to be honest with you, I could not make a worse list of this show. I just have too much affection for it. And of the 56 episodes so far, I've yet to see one that didn't feel like it had heart and thought put into it. Like Adventure Time, I am just more and more intrigued with every passing episode. And I can't wait to see what the writers have planned next. What's your favorite? I have no idea what people consider the best of this show. I'd be really curious to know. Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.